Welcome to Jerusalem. Irrespective of faith or religious belief, Jerusalem is a fascinating ancient city that has played a pivotal role throughout history. We traveled here to learn more and were particularly interested in visiting the sites that tradition tells us that the religious and historical figure Jesus walked. We invite you to walk with us on our pilgrimage along the Via Dolorosa, also known as the Way of the Cross or the Stations of the Cross. For those who may not know, the Stations of the Cross are a 14-step Catholic devotion that commemorates Jesus Christ's last day on earth. The 14 stations focus on specific events that happened during that day. Enjoy this video as part of your own personal journey of faith at home or in preparation for your visit to Via Dolorosa. In the description, we've included a link to a Google Earth map so that you can follow along in real time or use during your travels. We're here in Jerusalem right now at the Lion's Gate and uh, we've got several things that we're going to see today including the Stations of the Cross and some of the very historically sacred uh, um, places that we're going to visit. It's going to be a big day. Uh, we have got a nice day and we're looking forward to it. So see you there. We are going to begin a bit earlier in the story. Located on an upper floor of King David's tomb, this room is considered one of the holiest sites for Christianity in Jerusalem. According to tradition, the Last Supper took place in this room. It is believed to be here that Jesus shared bread and wine with his apostles for the last time. According to the Bible, after the Last Supper, Jesus and the Apostles went to the Garden at Gethsemane. Here, Jesus asked the Apostles to keep watch with him while he awaited the soldiers who would arrest him. On the site of the Garden is now also a very special church. inside the church in Gethsemane and this is a very spiritual and uh, special place for Christians. Uh, this is where Jesus came and where he agonized before uh, his ultimate surrender and, and crucifixion. And uh, it's currently a church that was built in the 20th century as churches have been built and rebuilt as they've been destroyed over time. So this one, I think, was built in the 20th century. It's called the Church of All Nations because all the nations that uh, were involved in, after the war uh, participated in the construction of this church. We're outside the church now, so I can talk uh, a little clearer. This is actually the church constructed uh, that contains the Rock of Agony, which is where uh, Jesus uh, came before he uh, was uh, ultimately crucified. Um, knowing that that was coming, he agonized here uh, to the point, they say, where he actually sweated blood. So this is a very important and spiritual place. There's a lot of people here. And you can see actually within the church, the Rock of Agony is where uh, uh, that occurred. And it's a very sacred site where people place their hands and pray as well as other things there. So it's a really spiritual, neat place to be. We now leave behind the Last Supper Room and the Garden of Gethsemane and head back to the Old City through the Lion's Gate. 
Here we are only a short distance away from the beginning of the Via Dolorosa. After walking through this gate, we pass by the Pool of Bethesda before we reach the first station. Let's see that first. The Pool of Bethesda is described in the New Testament as part of the account of how Jesus miraculously healed a paralyzed man. Unfortunately, the pool is now dry, but you can see a number of archaeological excavations. Next to Bethesda is the Church of St. Anne. It was built over the site believed to be the childhood home of the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus. It is dedicated to Anne, the mother of St. Mary, who also lived here. We're in front of a basilica that was built by the Crusaders during the Crusades, and it was built after um, churches being here and destroyed many times. But what's really interesting and what is historical about this is this is the place that is attributed to the birth of Anne, who was the mother of Mary, and Mary was also supposedly born here. So this is the place you can go downstairs and there's some places where um, you can see that's exactly where they say uh, Anne and Mary were born. Uh, there are places to pray and it's a really beautiful spot. Outside the entrance to Bethesda and a little further on your left, you will find etchings on a wall that give you an overview of all of the 14 stations of the cross. After walking down a bit further, you will reach the first station of the cross. The first station is not completely accessible because today it is a children's school. This is where the Antonia Fortress stood, which housed the Roman guard. This is the place where Jesus was condemned by Pontius Pilate and where he received his crown of thorns. The second station is just across the street, inside a compound which houses a Franciscan academy and institute. There are two churches in the compound to commemorate the events, the Church of Flagellation and the Church of Condemnation. As we walk into the Church of the Flagellation, notice the crown of thorns above the archway, while inside, notice the beautiful stained glass windows and painted ceiling. The Church of Condemnation is believed to be the area that marks the site where Jesus was given the cross to bear. It has some original pavement stones from the era and some incredible statues and iconography. Stations three and four are right next to each other. Two churches are now here. At the third station, Jesus fell the first time. At the fourth station, Jesus met his mother. Images of these events appear on the doorways to mark these stations. At the fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus carry the cross. A small chapel was built in 1895 and dedicated to Simon to mark the fifth station. According to Christian tradition, 
This hollow in the wall was an imprint made when Jesus stumbled and rested his hand upon the wall to keep his balance. For centuries, pilgrims like us have also touched and smoothed out the stone and made the depression deeper. At the sixth station, Veronica wiped the face of Jesus. There is a small etching carved into the wall that marks the home of Veronica and the sixth station. Tradition holds that the image of Jesus remained on her cloth afterwards. At the seventh station, Jesus fell the second time. To the right of the seventh station and up a flight of stairs, the route takes you to the eighth station. Here, Jesus met with the women of Jerusalem. The route continues through a wide stairway and passage to the ninth station. At the ninth station, it is believed that Jesus fell a third time here before his final climb of Mount Calvary. From this station, we begin entering Ethiopian territory. We shall pass through the Ethiopian chapel on our way to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Inside this chapel, there is an interesting painting depicting the encounter between the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. From here, we step into the main square of the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. On our right, we find the steps leading up to the small Franciscan chapel where Jesus was stripped of his clothes. This is the 10th station. All other stations are within the Basilica as well. Within the Latin chapel in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, there is a mosaic that illustrates Jesus being nailed to the cross. This is the 11th station. In the Greek Orthodox chapel, just a few feet away, is the place of Christ's death on Calvary. This is the 12th station. 
a fissure in the rock supposedly displays the damage caused by the earthquake that followed Christ's death. An altar in the archway between the 11th and 12th stations marks the 13th station where Jesus was taken down from the cross following his death. Here you have the opportunity to kneel and pray. Returning to the ground level, the 14th station can be found in the rotunda of the basilica. First, you pass by the rock where Jesus' body was laid and prepared for burial. The chapel leads into the tomb itself. It was here that Jesus was buried and, many believe, resurrected three days after his death. What do you believe? Watch this video to see what's next on our adventures and check out our customizable merchandise store. See you soon.